the Blessed Virgin Mary is a necessary part of God's plan for our salvation. And it's a plan based on love, not on fear. My comments today will be taken mostly from St. Louis de Montfort's famous work, True Devotion to Mary. God chose to become man, and he chose to do so in Mary and by Mary and through Mary. God chose Mary, and Mary accepted the honor of being chosen to share in the fruitfulness of God and bring forth his only Son and then all the members of the mystical body of Christ. God the Son descended into the virginal womb of Mary as Adam into his paradise and there to live and grow, and finally from there to come forth to the world which he came to save. He did not choose to simply come walking out of the desert as a grown man and announce his gospel to the world. He made himself dependent upon Mary. Her consent was necessary for his plan. The advantages of this choice of God's are immeasurable. Nothing else but coming into the world through Mary could have brought us as many graces as we have received since the Incarnation. The honor bestowed upon Mary by God, not only in choosing her for his mother, but in all that he said and did in his whole life, shows us again that Mary was necessary and yet free in God's plan for our salvation. Mary is the mother of the way, the truth, and the life. The Father begets the Son. The Father and the Son together breathe forth the Holy Spirit in their mutual love for one another. But the Holy Spirit becomes fruitful only in the womb of Mary, producing there the incarnate Word. Not that he could not be fruitful by himself, for certainly he is God just as much as the Father and the Son. But it was in Mary that he chose to be fruitful. And more than just in the incarnation, but also in the sanctification of souls, Mary is necessary in God's plan. God chose to place at the disposal of the Virgin Mary all of the graces that would be bestowed on man for the rest of time. And is it any wonder that he should do that? For he entrusted to her the very source of grace itself. True, God could have chosen to pour grace out upon us directly, but he didn't. He chose the most blessed Virgin Mary to be the vessel of grace. And as grace once entered the world through her, so God has chosen to leave it thus forever. No one can have God for his father who does not have Mary for his mother. Just as in the natural order, a father is the giver of life while the mother is the bearer of life. So too in the spiritual order. God gives the life who is Jesus, but since he gave it through Mary, it is through Mary that the children of God are born. No one comes to the Father except through the Son, and no one comes to the Son except through Mary. Now, Mary cannot have this kind of dominion over men without being called the queen of all men. Her son is the king, and thus she is a queen. He by nature, and she by grace. God has made her necessary to his plan, and so she remains as long as God remains God. It's obvious that Mary then is necessary to us as well to obtain salvation, to grow in holiness, and to wage war against the world, the flesh, and the devil, which assail us continually from birth until death. In this battle, those who will follow God will conquer with one hand and build with the other, St. Louis de Montfort tells us. 
the saints of the end times will be formed by Mary in their devotion to her. She will shape them and teach them, even as she formed the body of our Lord in her womb and became his first teacher in his human life here on earth. The saints of the end times will thus draw all men to Mary by their holy example. And it is by her and through her that Christ will conquer. So it is true indeed that in the end, her immaculate heart will triumph. The last man standing in this battle between heaven and hell will hold in one hand the cross of Christ and in the other the rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So true devotion is not optional. How could we not love her, she whom God has so loved and favored, who says he loves God but hates his neighbor, is a liar. Oh, but Father, I don't hate Mary. Just never thought that much of my devotion to her. Then we misunderstand devotion to Mary, and we do not know what it means to love God. Devotion to Mary is devotion to Jesus, and to love God is to love what God loves. And after his own perfect nature, so perfect that he is triune, three in one. After his own perfect self, whom does God love more than the Virgin Mary? To honor her is to follow the example then set by God himself, not only in his human nature, but also in his divine nature, in which he chose, chose to bless her above all the rest of creation. And so it is impossible to truly love God without loving Mary. Again, I recommend St. Louis de Montfort's true devotion to Mary for those who know it and for those who don't know it. Read it for the first time or read it again, but read it and pray it and live it. Loving Mary is not optional. We belong to Jesus Christ because he purchased us with his blood. We have been bought as slaves, and then we have been given to our master's mother. Woman, behold your son. If you want a simple and joyful way to become holy, there is only one solution, and that is Mary. Be devoted to her, and nothing can harm us. Does that mean that we won't have trials and sufferings? No, of course not. But the joy of those who serve Jesus through Mary cannot be diminished by suffering. As St. Louis de Montfort teaches, true devotion is very peaceful. There is no fear for those who love Mary. Those who try to love our Lord without Mary, they may be very fearful They may approach their judge as a judge and not as the man, the son of Mary, united to the divine nature for sure, but a just and merciful judge. Focus not on fear, but on love. Live your life in love, not in fear. Children may fear their father's wrath, but they fear much more the loss of their mother's love. True devotion is interior. It comes from the mind and the heart, from the seeds of spending much time with Mary in prayer. True devotion is tender, even as the child rests without fear in his mother's arms. We've all noticed, no matter what goes on around a small child, they can sleep through it in the arms of their mother. Mary is the perfect confidence that only a mother can bring. True devotion is holy, for it causes us to imitate our mother, her humility, her faith and obedience, her prayer, mortification, purity, charity, patience, sweetness, and wisdom. If we fail in any of these virtues, we know that we have not spent enough time with or abandoned ourselves completely to 
Mary. True devotion is constant. It's the habit we learn at our mother's knee. And it's not easily put off. Those devoted to Mary are habitually good and confirmed in goodness by her loving example and prayers. And they are not easily swayed from that path. Not easily swayed from that path. It's more difficult for those who are devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary to sin. There's a happy thought. More difficult to sin. And finally, true devotion to Mary is disinterested. It's based on love, and love seeks first and foremost the good of the one loved. Not fearing our own harm or downfall. Christ hanging on the cross was not whining and thinking about his own suffering, but he concerned himself even then with those he loved. Where there is self-interest, there is fear. Where there is true love, there is no fear. Only courage and boldness and joy. In short, true devotion to Mary is nothing more than the perfect and certain and shortest way to live our baptismal vows. In fact, in the consecration to Mary, according to St. Louis de Montfort, we say, I, a faithless sinner, renew and ratify today in thy hands, O Immaculate Mother, the vows of my baptism. I renounce forever Satan and all his pomps and works, and I give myself entirely to Jesus Christ, the incarnate wisdom, leaving to thee the entire and full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me without exception, according to thy good pleasure, for the honor and glory of God, in time and in eternity. Amen. It's not about us at all. It's about Mary. It's about Jesus. And this raises one of the great difficulties that many people have with true devotion to Mary. What then becomes of my prayers? Can I ever obtain anything that I pray for? Should I even bother to pray for anything in particular? Well, think of it this way. When we earn graces that may profit others, those graces go where? For those who make this consecration to Mary, according to the method of St. Louis de Montfort, those graces go into the safekeeping of the Virgin Mary, the Queen of Heaven. So do we lose all access to them? Does a child lose his own money just because he entrusts it to his mother? Of course not. But she makes sure that he doesn't spend it foolishly. She can even supplement it and make it worth more money if she has control over it. The graces that belong to us by making good communions and praying and other pious works, we still enjoy the effects of those. But the graces that we merit by those acts, we give to Mary. Then if we have need of anything, we can go to her. She will give us what's really best, for she cannot make a mistake. She will give us what we need and still be able to provide perfectly for all the things we ask for. But now we have to go to her for everything. How pleasing that must be to God for us to be turning to his mother every time we want anything. Finally, let's look at the motives and the effects that St. Louis de Montfort speaks, for, speaks of for total, totally consecrating ourselves to Mary. Belonging to Mary makes us more perfectly belong to Jesus Christ. It conforms us to his virtues and the life of the Trinity. True devotion to Mary makes us her favorites and the beneficiaries of her power, embellishing our good works and purifying them. True devotion to Mary is an excellent way to obtain the greater glory of God, and it leads to union with God by an easy, perfect, secure, and short way. It frees souls from all that might keep us from God, for we belong totally to Mary and nothing else. And by our total consecration to Mary, we also do our neighbors the greatest good that we may do them. 
finally total dedication, consecration to our mother, is an exceptionally grand way to ensure our perseverance in the spiritual life. Therein lies the secret. Teresa of Avila tells us that there is no trick, there is no magic to the spiritual life, but perseverance. In return for this total consecration, Mary will love, foster, nurture, conduct, direct, defend, and protect us, and, of course, intercede for us in heaven. What more could we ask for? Why would we not want to place ourselves in her hands? And lastly, we see the effects of true devotion to Mary. We gain knowledge of self and thus a holy contempt for self and distrust for self. We participate in Mary's faith, and we are certainly delivered from scruples and fear and anxiety. Even our cares become light. We grow to great confidence in God and in Mary as we are united to her soul and spirit. The more faithful we are to our consecration, the more we're transformed into the image of Christ and more perfectly obtain the glory of God. Some pretty compelling motives, these. What further need have we for convincing, then? True devotion to Mary. Don't wait for the movie. Buy the book. Read the book. Live it. Make the promise. The next 33-day period of preparation for total consecration begins this coming Friday. It ends on August 15th. Get the book. Start reading. And we'll see each other again in heaven.